Today we have a newly released Grand Seiko limited edition piece, which was announced last week. And a week later, I have it in hand and ready to show you all. But before we get into the video, I just want to point out that this is how you do it. Excellent job, Grand Seiko, in putting a watch out and then delivering it right away. No games, no silly undisclosed wait time for a year and we still don't have it. No, here it is. This is how it's done, folks. And whether you like this watch or not, let's thank Grand Seiko for this masterfully done release. So 2023 marks the 110th anniversary of the first Seiko and Japanese wristwatch, which was created in 1913, being the Seiko Laurel. And to celebrate this, Grand Seiko has recreated a version of its first wristwatch from 1960 with the SBGW 295 Limited Edition. This piece may seem simple, but the dial is a work of maquillé art, which is a traditional technique of decorating arushi lacquer by sprinkling pure gold powder into it. The black arushi lacquer used on the dial is a special compound crafted specifically for Grand Seiko and made from domestic Japanese lacquer, making it unique. It has had iron mixed in to make sure that it stays the same black quality and retains shine over a long period of time. It does come with two straps, but the equipped one is very special and is a woven leather that has been created by a technique called yorori, or armor weave, and was once a technique to make samurai armor. It also has quite a few more surprising tricks up its sleeve, but is this the most sophisticated, simplistic watch that exists, or is this just a simple piece that you will avoid? Let's find out. What's up everyone, it's Chris with the Little Treasury Channel. Welcome back. This is where we bring you original and in-depth watch content at least once per week. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be alerted as soon as we upload. I'm from Little Treasury Jewelers, which is located in Gambrels, Maryland. And it's where you go when you're in the know. As always, the watches that I review are for sale and can be purchased, so please see the description below to contact us. If you're just joining us now, I'll go over the watch's detailed measurements and features, and then I'll offer my personal opinion at the end. In our last video, I reviewed the Seiko US Special Edition Cave Diver SPB349, which is a titanium Shogun with a soft green textured dial that resembles the inside of an underwater cave. This one is great for those of you who are afraid of titanium, but would like to get your feet wet and try something that isn't extremely light, but is lighter than steel still. Wrist check time. Today I'm wearing my Grand Seiko SBGA211 Snowflake which is a watch that has seen many other Grand Seiko pieces become popular and then go away. But guess what? This one's still the king. I'm glad that I picked this one up and I recommend this to anyone as a first Grand Seiko still. Now tell me which watch you're wearing while you're watching the video and make sure to tell me why. Now let's get on to the features. The Grand Seiko SBGW295 has a 37.8 millimeter case width, an 11.3 millimeter thickness, a 45.5 millimeter lug to lug, a 19 millimeter lug width, a 33.8 millimeter crystal diameter, and weighs in at 54.11 grams. The case is made out of brilliant hard titanium, which is Grand Seiko's proprietary alloy, but is most likely based from grade five since it provides a shine similar to stainless steel. It is Zeratsu polished completely on the bezel, lugs, and sides. A non-screw down crown can be found at the three position and has the Seiko S in the center. The sapphire crystal is box style and protrudes above the case to protect it from scratches. The dial is in a shiny black arushi lacquer, which is made from the sap of an arushi tree and is actually poisonous to the touch in its raw form. The indices and Grand Seiko logo, which is in the original font, have been handcrafted in pure gold by Ishu Tamura, who is a lacquerware artist from Kanazawa. A gold toned minute grade can be found around the perimeter of the dial. The hour and minute hands are Dolphin style with a simple line second hand, all in gold tone. Diashock 24 joules can be found at the bottom middle portion in gold tone. And Diashock is Seiko's way of saying it is shock resistant. And that was present on the original watch as well, but with 25 joules instead of 24. No loom is present on this piece because it has no place on a piece of art such as this. The case back is open with a sapphire crystal window and each model has a limited edition number out of 500. The SBGW295 uses the 9S64 movement, which is a manual wind. It is accurate to between losing three and gaining five seconds per day, has a 72 hour power reserve, and beats at 28,800 beats per hour. It has a total of 24 joules. 
This piece comes with two straps, a black leather one that is in the box and a black strap made from a technique called Yorori, which is thin strips of calf leather and fabric interlaced together by an artisan to enhance its durability, which is the same way they use to make samurai armor. The clasp is in brilliant hard titanium and is a folding pusher style with a GS logo engraved. The Grand Seiko SVGW295 is splash resistant or 50 meter water resistant, is limited to 500 pieces worldwide, and can be yours for $13,800. Now for my personal opinion. I haven't been this excited about a Grand Seiko piece in a long time and never ever a dress watch. The simplicity of this is fantastic, yet every piece of this watch is special. The dial is made out of Arushi and markers Machie. The case is titanium and the strap is a samurai armor weave. In regards to the strap, I really like this strap. I really like how it looks and I know that this has been a divisive thing in the groups, but just remember that this isn't Kevlar or a simple textile. It is a leather and fabric woven together seamlessly by an artisan and it feels and looks awesome in person. I'm someone who likes wearing a watch how it was supposed to be worn. And although you can wimp out and put the secondary leather strap on that comes with this, this is intended to be worn with the Aurori strap. The price on this one is definitely a bit higher than the usual Grand Seiko. And I honestly think it is justified with the level of artistry and craftsmanship that has been put into this piece. The pure gold on the dial looks as special as it actually is. And the Arushi lacquer shines. I'll go ahead and recommend this piece to any collector who would like a rare and very refined dress watch that looks and feels special and is bound to give you pleasure when gazing upon the high level of detail. Thanks for watching today, everyone. I really hope that you enjoyed the video. And of course, if you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and share with all of your friends and your family members too. I look forward to seeing you next video.